hi guys uh, in this video i want to uh, tell you how to design a job in data stage parallel job and how to execute the job and how to monitor the job while uh, job execution time so uh, being a data stage developer uh, you will use mostly these two components data stage components uh, one is designer client and another one is director client uh, designer client and director client in the designer client you will design the uh, parallel jobs and you compile the jobs and you can execute the jobs also and in the director client director client the name itself is director client so here uh, you can monitor the jobs you can uh, see uh, see the logs uh, while uh, job in running state and you can abort the jobs while job in execution mode uh, you can uh, schedule the job also to particular date and time uh, to trigger automatically so uh, these are the two main components so uh, in this video i'm going to cover uh, these things creating a job and compiling and executing the job uh, second one is monitoring a job uh, when it is running. Uh, third one, uh, I'll tell the I'll tell this uh, scenario today. So this is a real time scenario. So if you see here, uh, design a job to achieve below output. So the input column is like this. Uh, the input data is like this. Uh, employee ID, leave start date, and leave end date. So uh, there is only one record here so output they want like this uh, here what they are doing employee id leave start date and leave end date whenever an employee applied for a leave uh, here it is calculating number of days and the number of uh, uh, days he is on leave so on the dates when he is on leave when he is going to be leave uh, they want uh, output like this okay so uh, this is employee id leave start date and leave end date so in the output they want like this employee id and leave date particular date number of days one again the date is incremented by one on 16th uh, date also he is on leave uh, number of days one and 17th 18th 19th 20th on these days the employee is on leave so they uh, need output like this so uh, we'll see now how to design a job uh, to achieve this okay so so here is the scenario one uh, okay employee leave dot so it is a text file so it is a delimited file we can say uh, the first line is the header uh, employee id uh, delimited uh, pipe uh, delimited and leave start date is the second column and leave end date is the third column 19th 15th of uh, november and end date is 20th of november okay so how to uh, we'll see in data stage how to read this uh, file and how to process it and to achieve output uh, as i shown uh, like this okay that's it uh, let me first log in so we'll design parallel jobs any jobs uh, with using this designer client only so i'll be logging in just now Once we log in, uh, it by default asks which type of job we want to design. Uh, if you go to this jobs uh, section, so there are parallel job, sequence job, server job. Uh, we can achieve uh, this parallel job. So parallel job, we can achieve that scenario. So uh, for uh, first of all, I have to the input data is in a file. So the input data is in a file. So it is a text file don't confuse about this 
it is a text file okay so uh, it is a text file here uh, for reading any kind of uh, this uh, delimited files comma separated files text files we use mostly the sequential file stage it uh, useful for reading the files and applying some operations on files uh, like some unix op unix command we can execute on the file uh, within the data stage data stage job so this is the sequential file stage and uh, uh, i need a transformer stage next because i am transforming the data so transforming the input data so i want a uh, i want transformer stage here so i'll just connect these two using a ds link and i want to write the data which is transformed after the transformation i want to create one file we can create a file or we can overwrite a file uh, for the for our output so i'm joining these two and uh, for reading sequential file stage uh, please just open this like this and we have to choose there are two options if you want to read only one file with the uh, one file so we use specific file and if you want to read multiple files uh, with common name like uh, uh, employee1.csv employee2.csv employee3.csv like the similar name uh, that like the files which are having similar name uh, uh, which are which uh, their names are in similar fashion so we use file pattern here now we are reading only one file right so we use only specific file so <coughs> i want to uh, read the file so let me uh, tell the path to this this data stage so in my c drive data stage scenario scenario 1 amp underscore leave dot txt is my uh, input source okay if you see here options you have to look into the stage properties format columns and everything uh, for understanding the stage in a better way so if you see the data uh, in the file is it contains header value if you see here employee ID, this is a header employee id leave start date and leave end date it describes about the what type of data file contains okay so uh, we have to mention these are the columns available in this file so to there then uh, sequential file stage can read the data properly so go to the uh, first of all we have to mention like this uh, first line is column name false first line is column name is equal to false so the name itself is saying it is asking uh, first line is column name is uh, first line is column name is true or not it is true here because we have header so first line is the header so it is column names header is nothing but column names so we here we choose true so what it do without a header uh, by skipping the header if we select here true now it skips the header and it reads the remaining data and process it okay format go to format and uh, this uh, delimiter it is asking some delimiter delimiter is nothing but which is separating each and every column so here ead is one column and leave start date is another column so here two columns are separated by delimiter uh, delimiter pipe okay this is the pipe symbol so we have to mention that file contains delimiter pipe so here values are there but uh, pipe is not here so we have to mention pipe symbol okay quotes double so here our columns doesn't not included in quotes so none this is the thing and uh, first of all let me import this uh, column uh, columns so we can import the columns or we can uh, manually write the columns also let me import the column me delete it because i have already imported that one so i want to import uh, metadata of the file metadata is nothing but the data about the data here metadata is nothing but the header details header details contains column names metadata is nothing but column names so here to import the column names 
here. Uh, we have any place you can choose, table definitions or built in, whatever it may be. Just right click it, uh, import table definition and sequential file in definition. For sequential files, we have the option sequential file definition. Okay, choose this one and select the directory where it uh, the file is available. So see scenario one. Okay, okay. So here it lists the file types. So uh, our file is a text file or CSV file. It is a text file. So text files I have chosen and I'm selecting this employee.csv. Uh, let me charge this import. Import here you should mention that while importing it, it is asking about the metadata. First line is column names, right? So I have to, I'm choosing the checkbox here. First line is column and it is another delimiter. So I'm, it is not comma by default. It is comma. So I'm just removing the comma and I'm mentioning pipe symbol. Okay. Define here. You can see the column names and values integer date date. So you can import here. Okay. Import the data here. Here table definition is import. So choose here emp underscore leave dot txt. Okay. So it is asking to import and it is showing available columns in metadata. Here you can skip or you can delete the uh, no, you can't delete here. So you can you can delete and you can import using this. We are just dragging to this side. Okay. So uh, please understand. Here the data type is integer. Here the data type is date. For date data type, uh, we don't give this value. Okay. Okay. Nullability is no, 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 because we must get values here. So if we don't want values, uh, if we don't get values, the record will be dropped out. The record will not processed or it must throw some error. Why? But because we know that condition, the fields should not be null it should contain some values okay so go to here format and uh, type defaults uh, date so how is the, our date format you should mention the format here so the default format is here is yyyy mmdd so in the file also it contains in the same form, format yyyy mm and dd okay next uh, choose the options okay columns properties file names okay everything is fine so first of all you can view the data here just view the data so uh, when you're doing practice now see each and every option so uh, then you will be able to understand everything and you can do some uh, analysis why this why this and what is this and how can we do that uh, you can uh, use uh, you can use the stage as much you can if you go through the property section and the field defaults and everything uh, apart from the video what i uh, uh, told and what i uh, conveyed apart from that you can go to the stage and research on that you can uh, identify many things also so the date is fine and table is uh, file is looking fine. So I'm just closing this one. Columns. Okay. Okay. So in the next two to transformer stage. So here. Uh, so first of all, we have to. Uh, we should know that the logic of the logic to achieve this. So I need an output like this, right? I need an output like this, right? So. Uh, let me uh, mention the proper employee ID. No, this is the correct one. 
19. For the same employee, how many days is on leave? We are generating dates on which the dates the employee is going to leave. Okay. So, so whenever you get a scenario, whenever you get a work, uh, you should identify logic and uh, how to achieve that. So here is the employee ID scheme and leave date on which which dates the employee is going to take leave. So 15th number of days one and 16th. So for every record, we need date incremented by one. So how to achieve that one? Okay. So for that uh, uh, transformer stage. So uh, I'm just mentioning the output. 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 Uh, my output is like this only, right? Three columns: employee ID, leave date, number of days, right? So the same columns I'm going to mention in my output. So the second column is leave underscore date. Here it is, I mentioned only date. So number of days. My number of days is fixed, right? So I want to uh, increment by one only. So it is the common one or fixed one. So we can give an integer. Here, uh, integer it by default it takes even you mention of no worries. So, I'm just not coding it as well because in every record number of days is one only, right? For every record, the value is common and same. So, I mentioned one. So, employee ID. So, I'm just dragging like this. So, from each record, it gives only same employee. ID. For, for one for one employee, ID only we are generating this many records, right? So, we got uh, this. Output format is same as we require employee ID, leave date, and number of days. Employee ID, leave date, number of days. Okay, fine. Now uh, we have stage variable option where we can do some calculations and intermediate operations uh, for faster process and better understanding. Okay, not faster process, better understanding. So I'm just mentioned I want to identify the uh, number of days between the I first of all I want to uh, identify to achieve this uh, output I want to identify the number of days uh, which is uh, between these two days so I need an integer value which is nothing but the difference between these two dates okay the difference between these two dates I'm repeating that one I want to identify the difference between two dates. So to achieve this in data stage, uh, I'm just, uh, what is the result? Number of days between the two dates. It means result is integer. So I'm just mentioning here as integer. Okay, it is an integer. So and the function I'm going to use uh, here, if you right click now, you get many uh, function if you choose function here. So there are many predefined function you can use that. Here if you, here you are calling some function means background that function is called internally in data stage. Okay. So here uh, I want to identify difference between two dates. Okay. Days since from date is the function. Where is that? Days since from date is the function so here i'm going to mention two dates okay what are the dates end date and start date end date and start date which is nothing but employee employee leave end date and employee leave start date. okay have to give two input parameters to this function uh, input column leave end date comma leave start it right because why i am giving leave start leave end date as first parameter means so uh, here 20th uh, 
November is greater than 15th number. So we are giving the high date. So that's why I'm hearing giving employee leave end date and second one employee leave start. Okay. So what it do? This function gives some value, which is nothing but difference between these two dates. What is the difference between these two dates? Five days. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 15, 20, 15 to 20, five days. But we have to include, we have to consider day 15th November also. So total six days employees going leave. Okay. That's why six days employees going leave. So that's why here six records generated. Uh, each record contains date on the on which the employee is going to take leave. Okay. So uh, go to the data stage and uh, so for this increment for this to achieve this we we need some loop concept so here loop concept i'm using uh, some uh, here the loop part can be used. loop is nothing but repetition of logic repetition of similar logic implementation repetition of similar logic implementation so i want to hear after identifying the difference between these two dates which is nothing but five days so i want to repeat my loop for five days i want to repeat my loop five days so on each day i am incrementing my start date one like this 15 one incremented by one means 60 incremented by one means 17 incremented by one means 18 like that i am going to achieve till 20 okay so here we have system variable at the rate iteration at the rate iteration is nothing but it's by default value is one okay less than or equal to stage variable svb plus one so at the rate iteration is the system variable which by default starts from one and in this loop iteration for each iteration the iteration value incremented by one Okay, here iteration value is one. One less than or equal to SV1 means five. The result uh, five plus one means six. Means the loop is repeated uh, until six times. Until this iteration value becomes six. One less than or equal to six and one iteration. And again, it uh, the logic inside will be executed. And again, iteration will be incremented by one means two less than or equal to six. Again, logic again iteration value incremented by one three less than or equal to six and logic again iteration value four less than or equal to six five less than or equal to six six less than or equal to six less than six sorry less than six until and unless we achieve that it just repeats so here I mentioned equal to okay equal okay so here I am going to take uh, I am going to generate dates on which employee is going to take leave so it should start from my start date right it should start from my start date so leave start date which is nothing but leave start date. okay so every time i have to increment one date value okay loop variable i want to create a new loop variable which is nothing but a uh, loop where okay we can give any name also you loop variable properties you can go and give any value not a problem so here the loop value is nothing but date right so date we don't give any size okay okay so here i'm going to increment my date so for this also i can use some function so initial date uh, should be uh, incremented by zero because initial date should be incremented by zero because the first record is 15th of november on 15th of november also employees on leave so for the first record we should not increment the date right so for that i'm going to use uh, my input column which is leave start date so uh, leave start date should be incremented by one 
it is not an ordinary integer right we can uh, should in, uh, to increment it is a date we have to increment date so for that incrementing date we have to use one function for incrementing the date we have to use one function so again functions date function next date from since days one function is there so date from since date from days since date from days since so what it do it simply takes uh, a number value and a date it simply takes a number value and a date so what is the iteration value iteration minus 1 comma leave stat input column leave stat okay so what here i did date from days since date from days since i am giving a date and what is the next date if i add this number of uh, this number to this date suppose 15th november is one date so i am giving one more i'm giving i'm just incrementing the date with one value plus one date plus one I, it means it should be 16th it should be 16th for incrementing the date i'm using this function date from days since so at the rate iteration minus one is the integer value and uh, ds link leaves start date okay okay this is i have done okay so for every iteration for every iteration my loop where value uh, variables value should be passing to this column so i just simply drag and drop it here okay i do if i do again same same operation it is asking overwrite okay like this okay i have implemented some logic like this date from day since so here at the rate iteration minus one plus comma uh, this leave start so what from which date onwards we want to increment the date okay this is the thing for function here please go through these two functions google it or you can achieve the, you can uh, refer in the ibm sites or whatever it may be you can uh, get this information so these are the two functions to h this one okay so here at the rate iteration value is by default one at the rate iteration value is by default one so for the first record in my output i should increment zero because the first date should not be changed it should be same so 15th 11 201 so that's why i am just uh, making the first iter iteration value is by default 1 1 minus 1 becomes 0 it means for the first record i am not incrementing the date for the first record i am not incrementing the date that's why iteration minus 1 iteration by default value is 1 1 minus 1 becomes 0 and next when iteration value is incremented to 2 2 minus 1 means 1 next 3 3 minus 1 means 2 like that it goes on. okay so this is done okay so my employee ID, leave date number of days if you see here i have just dragged the employee ID column and for the second column i am using the loop variable means every record employee ID is common and leave date is we'll get from this loop execution uh, of that particular iteration value so for the first record loop execution it goes to the loop execution uh, and get the value and the second record it goes to the loop execution value it goes to the loop execution third value it goes to the loop execution fourth value. like that it takes the values to the output so this is the thing implemented i so employee ID, leave start date, leave end date are the three input input columns. And I have calculated the difference between these two dates using this function. Using this function. So and uh, I'm just uh, defined other output columns like this. So on the column which is varying for each record now. So I'm just defining logic as loop variable. So within this loop variable. I'm just using iteration less than or equal to 1, s3 plus 1. And inside loop logic, I have mentioned 
I'm incrementing the date by one for every each and iteration. For every each iteration, date from days since. Okay, I'm just uh, closing it, uh, and I'm just mentioning the output column, output file. So here I'm going to mention the path of my output file. Again, same sequential file stage I'm using for generating the output in a file. Okay, so employee score leave output. So here you can use all files. Oh, emp underscore leave days. You can see days dot csv. Here I'm generating a csv file. Okay, I want the header in the output column. So that's why here it is asking first line is column name is equal to files. Means it generates the file without header information. Means without column names. So I want column names. So I'm just putting it true. If I mention true here, it generates the file with the header. In the header, it contains column names. Okay, this is the thing. So columns by default we can because we dragged uh, from transformer to this stage right so okay. so let me just save this job first first of all i have to save the job before i compile if i don't save the job and i go if i go to the directly compile it gives some alert like this the job must be saved before it can be compiled so we have to save a job before we go to the compilation okay yes and i'm just going here jb underscore scenario one okay here i'm just saving show so it is taking some time for compilation compile is just doing nothing but converting the code into the data structure execution understandable form okay it checks the syntactic errors and all so compilation is done so i'm just running the show so this is the portion run in this taskbar so you can use menu bar it's not taskbar menu bar in this menu bar you can use this run option so here it is asking some features warnings about the job after warnings so in the job execution it gives it throws some warnings while it is getting executed so we'll see that in uh, coming sessions okay just run the show so if i want to uh, if i want to check the logs now you can use control l as the shortcut control l so it comes in the green state means job will gets completed and successful so here you can check the logs okay and uh, one more way and authentic way for checking the logs is go to here tools and run directory to check these logs in directory tools run directory so it is asking the credentials yes so if you go to here jobs scenarios pjb jobs Here I have saved my job. Here you can check the logs monitor. So it is showing some green okay. number of records input one trans uh, in the transfer till transformer one record. So we have generated logic and transformed the data into six records. Okay. This is done. So let me check the output. Here it is my output. So it is looking like uh, an Excel file, but it is a CSV file. So you can check the format properties here. Properties dot CSV. Okay, dot CSV. So you can open it with not. You can open it with this Excel option. Not. Okay. 
it is uh, generated dates like this. So let me cross check with the input scenario given to us. It is in the same format uh, like uh, right 19, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right. So, but because, but uh, here uh, in my input file, my date format is like this. Right. My date format is like this 2000 YYY MM date. That's why output is also generated in the same format. YYY MM date. YYY MM date. 15th to 20th employees only. 15, 16, 17, 18. 19 20 employee is 19 okay clear that's it uh, this is the real time scenario which is asked in interview which is the, one of the, uh, this is the one one of the scenario question recently asked in uh, interview okay so uh, this is the option uh, in this compare here you can run the job and tools run directly to monitor the logs okay that's it uh, that's it i'm done with this uh, scenario so in this session i have covered creating a job and uh, uh, how to read the csv files using the sequential file stage and uh, transforming the data uh, with uh, and generating a csv file and we have covered one scenario we have covered this scenario here it, the date looks like uh, different but uh, we can achieve uh, the date uh, as we like but uh, in my input file date is a little bit different 2019 uh, 11 15 like that so but uh, scenario is different but uh, the logic is same okay fine thank you